Good afternoon, everyone. We'll get started here in just a second. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Annalisa Roberts, Economic Development Manager for Williamson, Inc. Williamson, Inc. is the Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development Agency for Williamson County, Tennessee. Our inclusion workshops are designed to celebrate our differences and teach us how to create a workplace environment that places value on treating all employees as individuals fairly and without bias. This quarter's inclusion and diversity focus is diversity of talent in the workplace. And joining us today is a panel to talk about hiring and supporting individuals with autism. Our panelists will present and then we'll have a time for question and answer at the end. So feel free to drop any questions that you have in the chat. Please welcome to the panel, Dr. Kayvon Stasis, who's a professor of physics and astronomy at Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt University and the director of the Frist Center for Autism and Innovation. And you may recognize Dr. Stassen from the 60 minute segment that aired um, late last year that highlighted the Frist Center's work with people with autism. Um, and then we'll go ahead and drop that uh, link to that video in the chat for you all in case you've missed it. Um, next, we have Ernie Deanna Stassis, who's the founder and CEO of the Precisionist Inc. And we have Glenn, Glenn Wingard, who's the director of IT software quality Assurance Operations and IT Service Management at Tractor Supply Company. So gentlemen, thank you for being here today. If you wanna go ahead and turn videos on, please do. Great. All right, so let's get started. Um, first of all, I'd like for you all to just tell us a little bit about yourself, your company, the, the work you do, and then specifically how you got involved with the Precisionist. So Ernie, do you wanna start us since that's your thing? That sounds great. Thanks, Annalisa. And uh, it's wonderful to, to be a part of this event and uh, congrats on all the great work that Williamson Inc. is doing to develop the economy and grow opportunities for your citizens in Middle Tennessee. So that's, it's terrific. Um, the Precisionists or TPI as we're often called is a national company uh, actually headquartered in Wilmington, Delaware, that we're focused on creating over 10,000 jobs for uh, neurodiverse individuals uh, by providing best practices and delivering IT and administrative services performed through teams uh, of neurotypical and neurodiverse talented people working together and delivering great services for our customers. Um, we have uh, just a couple of sound bites that may be helpful as we get into the program, but about us, you know, we, um, we have, uh, we work with a lot of great companies in terms of delivering our work. We're working with the largest pharmaceutical company in the country, Pfizer, on this journey with the largest utility and power company in the country, Exelon Energy out of Chicago. Uh, we work with major global banks, including JP Morgan Chase and locally UBS in Nashville. Um, we also are working with Comcast and Cox Communications, very large telecom. What's, what the important message here is this neurodiverse employment doesn't favor any industry. This can be successful in any company and working uh, because most companies do have a similar subset of the types of work that needs to get done, whether it's IT or business administrative services or things even as simple as data entry, almost every company requires these things. So uh, there's a lot of wonderful job opportunities for neurodiverse people. In locally in, in Tennessee, we have a made big commitment to the community, uh, which we just entered, you know, in the last few years. And we've been working closely, as I mentioned, with UBS, with Assurian, uh, HCA, 
Uh, Vanderbilt University, which Dr. Stassen is on this panel. We, we're doing a lot of things together with them. And Tractor Supply, uh, uh, you know, who is in Brentwood and a great company that you'll hear a lot more about from Glenn. Uh, so basically, um, our goal is to, you know, create opportunities for folks that potentially had been drawing services and resources from the public sector to survive to making them taxpayers. And uh, that's a double, we call it a double whammy, right? It, it's, it's not, it has an incredible economic development impact and it's absolutely doable. And it just, the individuals just have to be put on a, on a journey to be successful. And the companies we work with also have to be put on a journey to be successful. And we'll talk more about it, I'm sure, as we get into the panel questions, but that's just a quick overview of who we are and what we do. Great, thank you. Dr. Stassen, would you like to go next? My pleasure, thank you, Annalisa, and great to be with this uh, panel of friends and uh, collaborators. Um, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'm the director of the First Center for Autism and Innovation at Vanderbilt University's School of Engineering. Um, and as you heard in the introduction, I am a, I'm an astrophysicist. Uh, that's my day job or my night job, maybe. Um, you may wonder what the connection is there. Um, so I'm also the father um, of, a, of a son on the autism spectrum, 14 years old now. And, you know, when my wife and I first uh, learned of our son's diagnosis when he was four years old, um, we spent most of those early years um, worrying about how we would support him, um, trying to understand what his challenges were and how to, uh, how to help him through those. Um, and what we found was that there's, uh, uh, happily, there is these days are an, a, an amazing support network in place through the schools, trained professionals at the schools, um, cl clinics, uh, workshops, like through the Vanderbilt Kennedy Center, lots of support for parents and families uh, and, and children on the spectrum. But as our son uh, became a teenager and now, you know, is not so far away from, we hope college or in any case, you know, becoming an adult. And um, we, we hope, we dream of him getting a great job and um, having that be part of his sense of independence um, and identity. Uh, we really began to worry about the, that transition to adulthood. And uh, you, may, you may have heard this term that many families uh, will, will tell you, uh, they refer to the, the cliff at 18 years old or 21 years old, all of those supports that are in place, again, wonderful supports that are in place for autistic children really just don't exist for, for adults by and large. Um, and we worried, you know, uh, you know, our son is, is brilliant and wonderful and beautiful and has so much to contribute to the world. Um, but we began to worry, you know, very specifically, you know, how is he going to get through a job interview? You know, he doesn't make eye contact. He talks funny. Um, he doesn't understand jokes. Um, he's really terrible at small talk. <laughs> um, and, you know, and, and it really was kind of heartbreaking for us to begin to think about that. And so, so then I thought, you know, well, as a scientist, as an engineer, I, I'm, you know, kind of practically a rocket scientist. Um, you know, there ought to be a way that we can help figure out this challenge. And so with my engineering colleagues at Vanderbilt, we developed the idea for a center that would invent uh, and commercialize technologies that would help autistic adults develop the skills that they need to get a job, um, support them in the job to be successful, um, uh, get to work. Many autistic adults, the majority of autistic adults don't have driver's licenses. Um, and, um, and so we, we set about doing that. And then I started to actually recruit autistic talent into my research lab, uh, working on NASA research. And, um, and in that way, began to learn firsthand all of the wonderful things that can happen when you look beyond the surface uh, hire on the basis of strength and ability, and then support people uh, for the supports that they need. Um, my, my own lab became more successful. Uh, we made major discoveries for astrophysics and for NASA. 
now with the support of the, of the Frist family, we have this um, fully endowed center at Vanderbilt. And we are now able to use those technologies that we're inventing to support autistic adults. And very importantly, for today's conversation, we've been able to now partner with companies like TPI so that as we're bringing autistic adults in to benefit from the technologies, getting those skills and getting that training, we're not an employment agency. We can't hire very, very many people at Vanderbilt at the center, but partnering with TPI, now we can get those people in line to get fantastically good jobs. That's great. Thank you for sharing. Glenn, would you like to go? Sure. All right. Uh, my name is Glenn. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for uh, letting me be part of this, this panel today. And, and thank you, everybody, for, for joining for this important topic. Um, my name is Glenn Wingard. I am the, uh, and a, a director in the IT organization at Tractor Supply Company. Uh, we, uh, we embarked on this journey with a precisionist through an introduction uh, to Ernie from a, a young lady who used to be in our HR department. And and it was um, it was kind of being presented as you know hey here's here's a possibility is anyone interested and and I raised my hand and said yeah I think this is a, I think this is a, a very unique um, opportunity to tap into a, a workforce that that is largely uh, underutilized and, um, uh, and and can be mutually beneficial uh, both to the to the community as well as uh, to tractor supply so that's uh, that's a little bit of how I got involved with uh, the precisionists. Great. Great. Okay, um, my first question is for you, Dr. Stassen. Um, early in the presentation, um, Ernie mentioned neurodiversity. Can you define neurodiversity and tell us how business practices, such as interviewing you, referring to your son and some of the challenges he has, how those can be exclusive and then how your work, specifically some of the research you've done and the models that you've created are working to change that? Yeah, thank you for that question. And I think, you know, uh, for, for those of us like Ernie and Glenn and others who, um, you know, who, who are working actively in this uh, field of, of, of employing autistic people, um, the, the, the term neurodiversity and the idea of neurodiversity is, is really very important. Um, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, you think it's just words or just language, but there are times when language really matters. And I think this is one of those times, you know, if you think about DEI efforts uh, at companies generally, diversity, equity, inclusion efforts at companies generally, right? You know, much of the corporate world has, um, you know, has bought into this idea that um, that it, that it's important for for the companies to be reflective of American society, uh, makes good business sense. Um, the idea that if you draw more fully from the diverse strengths and abilities of people. Um, you make better teams, more innovative uh, teams and a more successful um, company and better bottom line. What neurodiversity does is it basically brings autistic people into that same idea that, you know, we all have our strengths and our weaknesses uh, as individuals. People with autism tend to have particular set of challenges around social communication um, uh, and what have you. Uh, but what neurodiversity does is it is it captures the idea that 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 these folks also have strengths to contribute, and in, and in some cases have really unique capabilities uh, that that many companies, um, if they can learn how to integrate these people into their workforce, would really benefit from. So when we when we say neurodiversity, we're talking about people with autism but in the context of that diversity, equity, and inclusion sort of mindset, uh, support people's challenges and needs in order to allow them to bring the best of themselves uh, to, make, to make the work better, to make teams better. Great, great. Um, can you talk a little bit about your work with people with autism? Again, we, we dropped the link to the yeah. um, 60 minute segment, but can you, for those who haven't seen it, can you talk a little bit about the work and how it might relate to productivity in your workplace, but also productivity to other businesses? Yeah, so, so I think, you know, there's sort of two sides to this. And by two sides, I mean, there's, there's the individual, there's the autistic individual and the, 
challenges that they may have and the support needs that they may have in order to get a job, in order to get to work, in order to be successful. That's one side. And then there's the, the, the employer side or the workplace side, um, things that, um, that a workplace might do in order to provide some simple accommodations that would allow the individual to feel welcomed, to be successful at work. Uh, many times individuals have, uh, with autism have sensory um, issues, you know, bright lights can make things challenging, loud workspaces can make things really challenging and distracting. So there's the individual side and there's the employer or the workplace side. And at the Frisch Center for Autism and Innovation, we've been trying to tackle both. So on the individual side, um, we've developed virtual reality-based tools that, for example, simulate a job interview uh, so that uh, a person with autism can practice a job interview. Uh, but even more importantly, the, the tool provides feedback to the individual on, you know, where were your eyes during that interaction? Um, uh, what were the kinds of questions that caused you to kind of seize up or, or to get really nervous or anxious? Um, to analyze the language that the person uses during that interview and provide suggestions for how they might um, you know, better communicate um, their, their strengths and their abilities. Um, we've developed a, um, a driving simulator, kind of like a flight simulator, uh, but for driving a car with, uh, with biofeedback and, and reinforcement prompts specifically designed for a person with autism uh, to, to learn how to drive a car. Um, and what we've learned is that whereas 75% currently of autistic adults don't have driver's licenses, once they have this kind of um, pre behind the wheel training experience or practice experience, they can get that driver's license. And the research is beginning to show um, that autistic individuals oftentimes are, are actually safer drivers <laughs> than the average person. Um, but it's really important, right? That's a skill that's necessary in many places, including in Nashville, to be able to get to work. Um, so those are the kinds of supports that we're doing to support individuals to get to work, get the job, be successful on the job. But we're also working with, um, with companies and workplaces to understand, for example, ways in which traditional um, job interview practices um, might um, disadvantage a person with autism. And even if they are the most skilled and capable person in the, in the applicant pool, the way in which they communicate, the way in which they carry themselves that just may not be familiar, or frankly, maybe off-putting to the interviewer, um, can disadvantage that, inter that individual. And so then not only do you disadvantage or discriminate against that individual, which is bad for the individual, the company has also lost access to, to that potential talent. Um, so we're working on both sides of that. Divide. At this time, I'd also like to, to drop in the chat some resources that you shared from the Frist Center. Both um, one is about addressing people with autism and the, the correct language to use. And the second is tips for employers. And I think those are great resources and we appreciate you sharing those. So those can be found on our website and there's also a direct link to um, the Frist Center's website as well. Well, speaking about the workplace, I'd like to jump to you, Ernie, and talk about um, TPI a little more. Um, talk to us about the work TPI does to lower the barrier of entry. I know that um, Dr. Stassen mentioned that a minute ago, but um, lowering the barrier of entry for individuals with autism who may need certain accommodations. And then also, how does that affect the business and what work do you all do to help with that? Oh, you're muted, sir. Great question, and uh, it's it gets right at the heart of, of what we do. Um, first of all, you know, and Kayvon was just talking about it. The 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 inter, the traditional HR interview that goes on in companies is a career killer for neurodiverse people. Uh, they oftentimes can't get through the first five minutes of of an interview where they may fidget, they may be uncomfortable, they may not look the person in the eye, and yet none of those things have any bearing as to whether somebody could be great at developing software or testing software or doing business analysis work. 
So we don't do interviews. We, we, uh, but you still have to assess talent. So we assess talent uh, by bringing individuals in and giving them some projects to do. And our folks are very trained and, and have a, a very good eye towards understanding an individual's uh, capabilities by observing and interacting. And uh, we begin to map out whether they could do something really complex like software development or whether they would be more successful at, at easier uh, tasks. But the great news is companies have all these things going on. There's a lot of projects and opportunities regardless of somebody's capability. So what we then do is we, they go from the workshop, you know, that initial meeting and we assess their talent. If we believe we can hire them for the types of jobs, then we put them into a four week assessment program. It's an assessment and training program. We're not only teaching them the, the technical skills for the specific job, but we're also teaching them life skills um, that are absolutely critical to being able to sustain employment in a professional work environment. So things like working on teams, how to make presentations, email etiquette, uh, personal hygiene, you know, we're giving them, if, if they were 80 percent under or unemployed most of their adult lives, nobody ever, they've never had the chance to learn these things. So we've got to help them on that journey. And um, so that's how one of the significant ways that we reduce the barriers to your question about, you know, getting accommodations in the workplace. The other big thing we do is we spend a lot of time working with companies that we work with and we've developed best practices to come in, for example, and do autism awareness orientation training of, of the leadership of the companies we work with. We uh, come in and, you know, because we're practitioners ourselves in IT and in doing business process, we can come in and understand how a complex organization runs and then tailor and kind of carve out the work and the jobs that need to be done in a fashion where these individuals can be successful. And, um, and so that requires planning and, and understanding. Um, and then we kind of carefully bring all those pieces together to create the successful employment outcomes. What about ongoing support for companies or for the individual? Yeah, so um, one of the things as the individuals are, are working, they're either working out of our, one of our innovation and technology centers that we have uh, throughout the country and we have one in Nashville, Tennessee, or they're working on the customer location site, like we did with, uh, with, with, as we have with Tractor Supply in Brentwood. And in both cases, we provide a significant uh, role is the project lead, kind of a project lead job coach role. It's, it's a practitioner that understands the nature of the work that's going on with our customers, but also someone who's well-versed and understands how to support neurodiverse talent. And it's that combination that really brings the risk down sure. and enables us to be successful. Great, thank you, thank you. Um, Glenn, I wanna to go to you because you've had experience working with precisionists firsthand. Can you talk with us about your experience and maybe some of the jobs you've seen them do at Tractor? Yeah, I'd be happy to, thank you, Annalisa. Uh, so we, we started our journey with the precisionists in uh, 2017. We got a contract uh, in place in 2018. One of, one of the things that precisionists did uh, early on and, and for which I'm very grateful is that they provided training to anybody who would listen um, regarding autism, the spectrum and working with uh, neurodiverse individuals. And they did that in person. They came to our, to our place of business and they came several times. I think I think we ended up having almost 200 people um, attend that training and it was voluntary. We weren't telling people they had to, uh, they were interested. And, um, and it, was good to, it was good to see that, that broad interest. The training was, it was very informative, it was engaging. Uh, I heard a lot of positive comments uh, coming out of it. Um, and and there, were, there were a number of, uh, you know, being in, being in IT and, and I, um, this may come across as humorous, I don't necessarily mean it that way, there were a number of individuals who, who mentioned to me after the training that, that they felt like they might actually be on the spectrum. Um, and that, that's not 
completely unusual uh, in in IT. It it um, it's it's really a pretty good fit for for folks that are uh, uh, neurotypical. Um, another thing that um, that they did, and I think that's very valuable to our success, is they toured our workplace. They came in and and they looked at where the individual would be sitting. Uh, what their environment was like, gave us recommendations around uh, uh, space and lighting and noise. And uh, there, was, there was one particular individual that, that we brought in from the precisionists who needs to, to get up and walk um, quite a bit. So we, you know, the recommendation was that we have that individual sit in an area where he can, he can get up and pace a little without causing distraction to the folks around him. And it was, that was a really good uh, you know, service that they provided that helped us, um, you know, with the, with the success. Yeah. Uh, the the model we chose initially was to bring in t- uh, two members uh, who were who were on the spectrum, along with one of these coaches that that uh, Ernie was talking about, um, who could who was also a practitioner in the space, so another billable resource. So we we brought in three people to do you know the work of three people, but one of them was also there to keep an eye on the other two and to make sure that we had a feedback loop going back to the precisionist to uh, encourage the success. Now we you asked about the positions that that they worked on for us. Um, I run the quality assurance department within IT, and and we brought these individuals in as as testers. Um, it worked. It worked really good with their their skill set of these two individuals. Now, again, uh, you, you might have heard somebody say that if you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. They're, they're diff- there's different. You know, everybody has different skill sets, like any group of of individuals. But um, these two, in particular, you could teach them a set of repeatable tasks, and their their precision was there. I mean, the name of, of Ernie's company is, is dead on. Um, they're, they're very precise and, and exacting and uh, you know, they can perform, um, learn quickly, perform tasks. And if you tell them, hey, if it doesn't work this way, we need to log a defect. If it doesn't work that way, they log a defect. I mean, they're, they're dead on. And it was, it was a real good role for them. That's great, that's great. Um, Ernie, I'll, I'll pitch that question to you as well. Are there other questions? Are there other roles that you see precisionists excelling in, um, maybe more often than others, or what is kind of the realm of those roles that you have available? It, it's very broad, Annalisa. I mean, it, it, we have, I would say, over thirty different types of jobs that we have hired that we hire for, and it can be again as simple as scanning doc paperwork that companies want to digitize and get indexed and digitized into their environment to get rid of paper or to protect it to all the way to, you know, being on an agile software development team, programming in .NET or Java uh, and everything in between. We do cybersecurity work. We do um, uh, data validation. We audit financial reports. We help with conversions from one software platform to another. I mean, you, Here's the best thing about all this. There are our company, are the companies we work with, they come up with great ideas too because they start brainstorming and they look at what kinds of jobs or roles have are following scripts or are repeatable or their desk aides involved or, or, or they're procedural, right? They t- these tend to be really good areas because individuals on the spectrum tend to follow process really well. And, uh, and, and, and also many times enjoy that constant uh, act, you know, focus on a process, which is really a great complement to the neurotypical community who oftentimes you know, burns out or doesn't want to do things that sometimes would be viewed as repetitive. Or, but uh, our folks take great pride in hitting accuracy numbers and in, and, and in terms of volume and productivity to, you know, each day they kind of challenge themselves and say, I bet I can do five more of these things today than I did yesterday. So there's, there's uh, we measure everything and we measure and show not to pressure them, but we measure so that because data and information tends to be really well received by neurodiverse people and it's a motivator. 
uh, to, uh, to know that you're improving, it raises confidence and it gives them the ability to do more things over time. That's great, that's great. Um, another question for you, um, what advice would you give to employers or, or even parents who may be in the audience today who are kind of interested in pursuing this either as a placement in their place of uh, work or as a parent who thinks I have a child who might be um, or an individual who thinks this might be a good fit for me? Yeah, I, I would say the, the, the best, this is a really, really positive message. And that is, there are lots of great jobs. Um, and by the way, I, I, we kind of couch this as kind of pre-COVID and post-COVID. Sure. There's even a lot of activity right now, but the COVID thing's temporary. And before COVID hit, there was six and a half million job openings that were unfilled in the US and it's gonna happen again. And the, in, the folks that are neurodiverse have the strengths to address many of these jobs. And, but the most important thing I would give to, you know, a, you know, advise a person that, you know, is neurodiverse or their family or, or caregivers or loved ones, commit to finding out the strength of that, of, of your personal strength. And that's really what matters more than anything else. And then what we can do is really map that strength to the right, the best kind of job where you can really thrive and have life success. That's, uh, that's what I would recommend. Yeah, that's great. Um, Could I add something on that, Annalisa? Sure. Do you mind? Please. Um, I thought Glenn's comment a minute ago about uh, the precisionist name being spot on uh, was, <laughs> was really a great point. And I wanted to just amplify that because in my experience, you know, the, at the Frist Center, we get approached all the time by individuals, by, by families, by, by companies, and they ask, um, you know, if we want to um, get involved in some kind of neurodiversity hiring effort, um, you know, what, what would be the best place to start? And my answer is always, you got you to gotta talk to Ernie DeAnastasis and his team at The Precisionist because not only do they bring to the company individuals who have that precision uh, ability and mindset, but also very importantly, Ernie's team has a precision ability to, to deep drill into any company's uh, org chart, you know, variety of work tasks, and to, and to help that company figure out what are the ideal jobs and tasks that that company does anyway, where the kinds of people that, that, that TPI is able to recruit and place where, you know, where, where they would be really, really well matched in terms of their abilities and the needs of the company. And so that's one of the things that I always really emphasize to folks when I'm, when I'm recommending that they talk to Ernie and his team is you, you know, company X, you don't have to figure this out. That is one of the pre precision uh, uh, things that Ernie's team brings to the, uh, brings to the table. That's great. And that's such a great resource for businesses who may not know where to start. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, I'm going to again uh, reference the um, links we have in the chat. Um, and so if anybody's interested, and then we're about to move on to the question and answer section. So for the, our audience out there, if you have questions, um, let's uh, go ahead and put those in and we'll address those here in just a second. Um, I have one question specifically for you, Dr. Stassen. Um, in one of the promotional videos for the Frist Center for Autism and Innovation, you, you say, and I quote, I wouldn't change my son for the world, so I'll change the world for my son. Uh, that, that quote stuck with me since I saw it. Um, how is your work, how is this work changing the outlook for people with autism? And how is it changing the lives of maybe the parents and caretakers who love them? Yeah, you know, you know, for you know, for so many of us, this work is is deeply personal, um, and I think, um, and I think, you know, and, and I think that's important because you know, you know, not only obviously do the you know do the individuals with autism, um, you know, um, you know, benefit from a much more positive life outlook and independence when they have the opportunity for a good job. Um, but, you know, the parents, right? I mean, 
I can just tell you, and maybe some of the folks who are listening in um, can relate to this personally as well. You know, what, what, what bigger fear is there as a parent than that your child um, won't have what they need for a fulfilling life after you're gone, right? Um, and, so, and, so, and so access to employment and meaningful employment is such a, such a big part of that. So we're talking about impacting the lives of the individuals who get jobs. We're also talking about the, well, you know, the, 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 the happiness uh, and peace of mind of the families. And then finally, I think, and, and I think Ernie and, and perhaps Glenn most of all can attest to this. One of the things that we hear over and over again from the companies who decide to go down this journey and open their companies to autistic people um, co-workers often will say at the company, co-workers will say, I'm more satisfied working at this company because I believe in what the company is trying to do to make, to make the company more inclusive uh, and to provide opportunities for these people. And now that I'm getting to work with these people, um, I would never want to go back because I see the ways in which they make me better, they make the company better. Um, and so it really is a win-win-win, you know, for so many ways, definitely in the personal, but at the end of the day, also for the bottom line. Yeah, that's great. I, I just appreciate you sharing that quote too. It just, especially as a parent, it stuck with me. Um, I'm not seeing questions here, so I'm gonna open it up to you all. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us today about while we wait for a couple to come in, or if not, we'll, um, we'll close. But is there anything, you know, to the bit we've got business, community watching, we've got teachers and, and school administrators. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share today? The floor is yours. Well, one pers perspective that I, I wanna put out there for, for anybody who is, um, who's uh, with a company that's considering uh, uh, tapping into this, this workforce, um, don't, don't think of this as philanthropy or as, as a cost savings measure. It's not what it is. It's an opportunity to tap into an, an underutilized um, workforce that, that comes with a particular skill set and, and it can add value to your company. Uh, approach it from that direction, not from a philanthropy or a, or a cost savings direction. That I love be a that. Recommendation. I love that. And I, I wrote that down because especially coming from you, you've seen um, the production, you've seen the work that, that the precisionists have done for your companies. That means a lot. Um, anything else from our panelists? If not, we'll go ahead and close today. I, I want to I, I add one thing. It's just more on a personal level with, you know, we have, we, sh we have a ton of stories like this, but one, just share one and specifically one of our uh, employees that's in Nashville. Uh, it, Gentleman in his mid thirties uh, has been under or unemployed his entire adult life until he got started with this with this project. Does not drive a car, uh, lives with his parents, and his entire social life has pretty much been in his parents' basement playing video games. Uh, no friends to really do anything with, and now, after uh, you know, eighteen months of employment. He is building a professional career. Uh, he's with the increased confidence, he went out and got his driver's license. He's just now getting his first and his own apartment and to living independently. And he's begun to build a circle of, of friends, fellow associates that, that are, are with us. Then they go out, you know, the, again, pre COVID, but pizza nights, bowling nights, things to do, right? That, uh, had never ever uh, have, you know been in place before, and to talk to his family and his friends and and loved ones, uh, and th they've seen it as transformative, and that's that's what we've all been talking about to just today, Kayvon and Glenn, and uh, you know what we're all working on together. All these puzzle pieces are important: the employer, the the university, and the research, and and someone like us who's creating the jobs, and and. Bringing all that together is what's going to create an outcome like this gentleman's having. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. 
And Al? Ernie, there's, there's a couple of questions in the chat that I think maybe you would be really good to answer. Yeah. Sorry to sorry to do that, Annalisa, but but I, I just I know that you know one of the questions, which is a really great one, is about transportation to work. And I thought, Ernie, just because you mentioned it briefly early on, but didn't get a chance to talk about it very much, is the uh, Innovation and Technology Center uh, in Nashville, um, and how you know sort of being able to bring those associates that you hire to your to your uh, facility even as they're doing work with partnering companies, how, you know, how that's a way that you're able to support you know, transportation and, and um, supports and development for people so that the companies themselves don't always have to figure all those things out themselves. Yeah, no, and you also, also uh, have to, should weigh in on this as well because of the simulator and the work that Vanderbilt University is doing around driving. Uh, but transportation is, is a huge, potentially a huge constraint to employment. But we, when we set up our innovation and technology centers, we very carefully select the location so that they're near uh, either mass transit or uh, other transportation options. So the one we have in Nashville, which is a Metro center is just a, a minute walk from the bus stop. And because obviously bus transportation becomes one of the options that's important. Now, driving, Kayvon mentioned earlier, only 25 or so percent of individuals, for example, on the spectrum, have their driver's licenses and, and drive. But Kayvon, you should comment on what Vanderbilt is, is really doing around driving simulation. And we're working together to figure out how to best bring that to market and have it be successful. Yeah, so, uh, so, we, so we've designed this, um, this driving simulator. Um, that um, is intended to help individuals basically get over all of the anxieties that we know often accompany autism that can be an impediment to learning how to drive um, uh, uh, you know, with, a, with a curriculum that we've developed, that we've co-developed with the, with the precisionists actually, uh, so that um, over the course of a dozen or so sessions, that individual can go from maybe having total fear and not knowing anything about driving to being actually ready for, for behind the wheel um, instruction and, and making that leap toward um, transportation independence. And um, our plan is to deploy that driving simulator instructional opportunity at the Precisionist facility uh, in downtown Nashville. So that'll be an opportunity that's available to, to anyone uh, who's interested in it. Speaking of accommodations um, and assistance, um, we had a question come in the chat for Ernie. Um, Glenn mentioned a third person being brought in to assist on site. Is that a typical arrangement? And then there's a second question I think you can answer too. Um, how would a company know if they're a good fit for the precisionists? Yeah, I, it, it is a, um, that project lead job coaching role is very important. We provide it with every project and every company that we work with because there needs to be a focal point for the company and their leadership in terms of remember what Glenn said a few minutes ago which was really important is that this is about performance and and the only way we can sustain and deliver great performance is that everyone we have to deliver the you know the projects have to be delivered well the work has to be delivered well and this this role is really important to uh, providing that feedback back to our organization to make sure that the individuals are getting the support that they need to be successful and, and the accommodations that they need. And Glenn highlighted some great ones, you know, like the physical environment or the nature of the work, all those things are really important. Um, so, so from that perspective, uh, you know, that, that's, that's a big step towards doing all that. Yeah, great. Here's another question I think is um, Dr. Stassen, and this would probably be one for you maybe um, as a parent, how would you work to help your child identify their strengths? Anybody's open to answer, but I thought since you shared your personal experience, you might be a good fit for that question. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so one of the things that we're, one of the technologies that we're developing at the First Center for Autism and Innovation, um, and you'll see this actually featured in a really, really fantastic uh, way in the 60 Minutes episode 
um, where the first center was featured with Anderson Cooper a few months ago, is a, um, is a system that can actually measure um, an individual's abilities with respect to what we call visual cognition. It's basically the set of abilities that people have and that oftentimes autistic people have in particular to detect patterns, um, to, um, to, to, you know, to, to figure out what is, the, what is the defect in a large you know, um, um, cluster of information or, or, or um, you know, quality control um, kind of situations. It's all what we call visual cognition. And we've developed a system that allows us to quantify individual strengths in visual cognition so that then we can begin to um, identify you know, what are, what are the larger set of you know, jobs and careers where, um, you, know, um, you know, whether it's you know, surveillance or, or, or quality control or you know, um, you know, you know, widgets coming off the line and you know, looking for defects or um, all these different kinds of um, jobs that really involve um, looking for patterns or looking for things that aren't like the other. So we, can, so we have a system to quantify that. The other thing that I will mention is um, we've, um, we, we've developed a, um, a, 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 a training program that we call RAP, Workforce Readiness and Preparation, that we've actually been doing every summer at Curry Ingram Academy as a, as a summer camp, a four week long summer camp. And that program has two goals. One is to help teach autistic teens and young adults some of the very basic um, expectations and skills of, of having a job, right? What are, the, what are the norms and expectations of being at work? You know, um, personal hygiene and dress and how you address others and uh, maintaining a schedule and being on time and communicating, all that kind of stuff. But the second goal of it is to help the individuals who are who are doing the the four week long camp to begin to identify what it, for themselves what are some of their interests what are some of the things that they might be particularly good at that they would enjoy yeah. um, and so our hope actually is that we'll be far enough through um, covid vaccines and the world opening up again that this summer summer 2021 we'll be able to offer that again at curry ingram so keep an eye out for that the last thing i'll say quickly is one of the things that Ernie's company does, um, I think better than anybody else, is when an individual comes to the, the precisionist and says, you know, I'm interested in a job. I don't know what kind of job I might be particularly good at. Uh, Ernie's company does an upfront assessment um, to indeed help that individual figure out where and all the different things that TPI is involved with, whether it's with Glenn and Tractor Supply or you know, all the different things that TPI is doing, what might that individual be particularly good at? That's great, because I saw that question earlier, someone asking about positions for them. Um, one other question just came in. Um, does the precisionist work with adults with special needs outside of aut the autism spectrum? Yes, and the answer is yes. Um, <laughs> you know, neurodiversity is, it, Although autism is a big part of it, it it's, uh, it's broader than that. So OCD, ADHD, uh, there are other developmental disabilities uh, as well, like uh, Down syndrome. We work with individuals that have had traumatic head injury. It's completely turned their lives up inside out. Well, there are, there are definitely opportunities for individuals that have, you know, been through that experience. So the point is we'll do as much as we can. We don't try to force it or do anything unnatural, but if, but we're very open to really trying to help people find life success. So we're open to that. And the best way for an individual or family would be to contact you. Is there um, an application process? Can you talk about getting started? Yeah, the best way to, the best way to do it is to go to our website um, and the precisionist.com and the uh, there's a, an, a spot that's pretty easy to find. It's called a statement of interest and an individual interested or, or their family member can enter a statement of interest. 
Um, at which point our talent acquisition team will absolutely follow up and get a dialogue started. Uh, that's the beginning of the process. Great. You'll also find the link to that, what Ernie just mentioned uh, from the Frist Center's website as well. Great, great, which is in the chat already. Awesome. Um, one question came in, I think is um, really interesting. How can the business community support your work? We would love to see more companies like Tractor Supply and, and uh, Vanderbilt University and UBS. Uh, we would love to see. So those of you that are here on this, you know, attending this today and it, go back to your companies and be advocates uh, for neurodiverse employment. And it, it, this is how it starts. You get a dialogue going and a couple people speak or there, there's a team of people working on figuring out how to do this. Uh, it's a, as, as uh, Glenn was saying and Kayvon were saying, it, it it does transform the culture in an organization. It's a wonderful journey to take, but it, it has to start with a few passionate people that go back and say, we should be doing this. And I would just emphasize one more time. I can't emphasize enough. You know, all, all you have to do, I mean, the way I would answer that question is all you have to do is be willing to wonder, are there, are there jobs in my company that would be a great match for individuals on the autism spectrum? That's all you have to do <laughs> because you don't have to figure out what those jobs are. You don't have to figure out how to onboard those people. You don't have to figure any of that stuff out. As, long, as, as soon as you take that first step of just wondering, are there, are there, are there jobs in this company where where, where an autistic person could be really successful and help make, make the company better, go to, go to Ernie, he, him, he and his team will then help you through the next steps and to figure all the rest of it out. And for same question to an individual who's looking for a business who's looking, what is to maybe get involved, what is the best process for them to um, reach out, Ernie? Same interest survey or the question? Yeah, well, if you're saying if a company's interested, yes, if a company says this, this will work for us. We is have my to... is my email up on the, your system. Just throw my email up there. I can make sure we send that out. <laughs> I would. I promise you, I'll respond, and I'll respond in a timely fashion. Would yeah. love to. Would love to hear from anybody. Yeah, or 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 me. I mean, as I said before, I mean, you know, the Frist Center gets contacted oftentimes by uh, by companies who say, you know. What can we do? How can we get started? And basically, the first thing I do is I say, "Okay, let me put you in touch with Ernie." <laughs> yeah, we have a great working relationship with this, and so thanks, Kayvon. Great. Well, um, we we just so appreciate you all being willing to spend some time with us today to educate us. These um, these are important conversations, and so I want to thank you for being here today, and thank you for spending your afternoon with us. And to our audience, thank you very much for. Um, for being here with us today. Thank, Thank you, Annalisa. Thanks, Annalisa. Thank you, Annalisa.